Welcome back to the channel guys. On today's video we are looking at this 23 horse Kawasaki. This is obviously a let's go zero turn. Your Cub Cadet and many other machines will be the same. When you have this motor running it seems to be running good but as soon as you give it power or as soon as you engage the blades it sputters and eventually it dies out. I've rebuilt the carb on this doesn't seem to be a carburetor issue. The ignition coils to fail on these is very common. So on today's video, I'm going to show you how to replace the ignition coils on these motors. There's two of them being the V-twin. I have a set of new coils here that we'll be installing onto this motor. And I will leave links to these parts in the description for you. So to access the coils, which sit right underneath this cover here. So we will be removing this cover. It does help to remove the whole filter housing out of the way also, but you can do it without that. So to remove this top cover, we'll be removing these 10 millimeter bolts all the way around. Once you have those 10 millimeter nuts off of this, this cage will just lift off just like that. Next thing we need to do is remove these 10 millimeter bolts. As these 10 millimeter bolts are out, this will also come off. We need to remove these 10 millimeter bolts around the cover. You can see one here, one right here, and also on the other side, there's one here and one here by the dipstick. So let's get those off. Bolts off. I was able to remove this engine cover. It is a bit tricky without removing this plate here, which holds your filter housing, but it can be done. You can pull this away a little bit just to squeeze the cover out of the way now that we have the cover off we can see this ignition coil coil here and there's one more on the other side for the other cylinder so to replace these there's two 10 millimeter bolts there's one here one up top this is a stud the whole thing will be removed there is a ground cable that's hooked up to this. That'll just yank off just like that. And also your main cable going to the spark plug. You want to go ahead and pull that off. And we'll get these bolts off. We'll remove this and the other coil. Now one thing I did forget to mention when we took the top cover off this. The cage does have a spacer underneath of it. That's what spaces that from hitting this. So you want to make sure you don't lose that. There's a 10 millimeter bolt here. And there is a nut on top of this, but I, which I took off. But this is a stud that you will have to loosen up. I've used, just used vice grips to grab it. Turn it counterclockwise. And that will come off just like that. This is just there to, to hold on to the cover. On that side. But sometimes these do tend to get seized up. On the other end, they get corrosion and they seize up. Um, in that case, you can use a stud remover. Sometimes they do break. You might have to drill that out. Uh, but hopefully that's not the case. So we have it off. Once you have those off, your coil will come off just like that. Let's go get our new one. Compare them. Make sure they're about the same. And we'll get the new one on. Our new coil sitting in place. And both of our mounting bolts for the coil, I wire wheeled them clean. And it's not a bad idea to use some anti-seize on both of the bolts so they don't seize up if you ever have to take it apart again. So we're just going to put it together just like how we took it off. We'll go ahead and put that stud on here. And we can use this nut to tighten it up once we're ready. So with that on, we'll also go ahead and loosely install the other bolt. Now before... You go ahead and tighten these all the way down. We do have to adjust the gap on the coil. If you can see how that can move back and forth. There is proper gap that we need to adjust. When you are adjusting the gap, you want to adjust it to this piece here. That is actually magnetic. As you can see. And that's what triggers your coil to spark. So you want to spin the motor until that piece is here in just about in contact with the coil now it's going to want to tend to pull the coil its way when it's loose like this because it is magnetic and this will want to pull in towards that 
Now we'll go ahead and put our card in there and adjust that gap and tighten up our coil. What we need to do is adjust the gap between the flywheel and the ignition coil. Now the specs on these Kawasaki engines, most of these are between 8 and 16 thousandths. I'm going to set around 11 thousandths on this. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, you can obviously have some type of a tool. Uh, you can use feeler gauges. So you basically you're trying to adjust the gap between this flywheel and the ignition coil. Since this rotates, you don't want this obviously grinding on to the ignition coil. Uh, so again, this can move back and forth. So to adjust the gap in between, I'm just going to use a business card here. So as you can see, I have it between the flywheel and the ignition coil. We'll go ahead and push this in and we'll rotate this at the same time make sure nothing's scraping obviously it'll tend to scrape on the card a little bit not a big deal uh, as long as it doesn't have to be exact perfect that's why you have between eight and sixteen thousands so we'll get it as close as we can and we'll go ahead and tighten this up and tighten up the ignition coil in place here and i did put some wire loom over the spark plug wire to protect it from heat and other elements that'll just make it last longer now we'll go ahead and repeat the same process on the other coil. It'll be the exact same steps. We'll get everything buttoned up and see how she runs.